Acts chapter 3, if you want to turn there in your Bible, uh, just a few minutes, I want to give you this thought. Say it with me. You ready? Repent, Repent. refresh, Refresh. restore. Restore. Let's do it again. Repent, Repent. refresh, Refresh. Restore. restore. Three R's. It's pretty easy, isn't it? Well, I want to bring out those three words in this passage. Look with me. Acts chapter 3 and verse 19. I feel the presence of God in this place. Amen. You know, I pray just as it's raining out there, it rains in here. Holy Ghost rain. Power of Almighty God. Hallelujah. All right. Acts 3, if you're watching, joining us live, we're so glad you're with us. And we pray that the Lord blesses you right where you are. Look at verse 19 of Acts 3. Repent, therefore. Everybody shout, repent. Repent. And be converted that your sins may be blotted out. For when times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. And he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you, whom the heaven must receive until the times of restoration, or restitution of all things, which God hath spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. Now what gave the opportunity for Peter to say these words? Well, in chapter 3, they go to the hour of prayer, and they see a lame man there, and he's been lame for a while. Jesus probably walked by him a few times during his own ministry, uh, and they fastened their eyes on them, and he's begging for alms, begging for money, and they say, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ. Rise up and walk. Powerful miracle performed by God, his anointing, his power. And then, of course, everybody is wanting to give the praise and accolades to Peter and John. And they say it's not by our own might or power or holiness that we've made this man to walk, but it's in the name of the holy child Jesus that he is risen and he's walking and he's leaping and he's praising God in the temple. Now, I was thinking just a moment ago when we were doing praise and worship how much he deserves our praise. I think about the ten lepers that God, that the Lord healed, and how many came back? Do you remember? Just one. I wonder if the rest of those folks kept their healing. I don't believe they did. I believe the one who came back was blessed and healed and made whole because they gave God all the glory. Hallelujah. And he deserves all the praise today. But notice the first words of Peter as he preaches his sermon. He says, repent. Repent. That was the first words of John the Baptist. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It was the first word of Jesus. When he came on the scene in his ministry, he said, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now, first words mean something, don't they? Powerful words. Repent ye therefore. Be converted. Now, repent. Now, I've said this over and over. Repent means to change the mind. A supernatural change in the mind. In fact, it also means reconsider. Reconsider your covenant. Reconsider your relationship with God. Where do you stand with him today during this pandemic? All that's happening in our country, all that's happening in our world. Reconsider where you stand with Almighty God today. A life, live a life of repentance, of turning to God and allowing him to change your frame of mind on how you look at things, on how you look at the devil, how you look at sickness, how you look at disease, how you look at anxiety and depression, how you look at the world and what's going on. I'm telling you, I've gotten to the point, we had lunch the other day, and you said, I don't care who's in the White House because God's going to be in my house. Amen? And it doesn't really matter because he's in control of our lives. Hallelujah. But live a life of repentance. We're not slaves to fear. No matter what happens in November. We're not slaves to fear. We're not slaves to fear to coronavirus or COVID-19. We are set free by God's power and we have a sound mind. Hallelujah. But it comes with repentance. Be converted. Now converted can mean two things. It can mean to turn to or to return. I like what Jeremiah the prophet said in Jeremiah 3 and 22. He said, return, O backslider, and I will heal your backslidings. There are many today watching maybe in this building who need to come to Jesus Christ for the first time, and there's many who need to come back to Jesus Christ. They need to make a return, a fresh commitment. They need to repent and say, here I am. Here I am. 
standing in the need of prayer. <laughs> it's me, 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 oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. Not your brother, sister, mom, or dad. It's you standing in the need of prayer and in the need of God's power. Be converted that your sins may be blotted out. Now, put your finger there. Look at chapter 2. When Peter's preaching on the day of Pentecost in verse 38, then Peter said unto them, shout it with me, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. What is the gift of the Holy Ghost? Well, it's two forms. Number one, when you come to Christ, do you realize it's the Holy Spirit that brings you to Jesus? That it's the Holy Spirit that convicts you of your sin to bring you to the Father through Jesus Christ who is seated at the right hand of the Father? So when you become a Christian, you have the Holy Spirit indwelling in your very being, indwelling your heart. In fact, your dead spirit comes alive because your spirit and the Holy Spirit hook up together and he regenerates you and makes you a new creation. Now, then there's the gift of the Holy Ghost that comes after salvation. Now, you can't convince me this isn't real. You can't convince me you can't receive it. You can't convince me that baptism happens at salvation. I believe spirit baptism happens when a man or a woman decides to say, I want to be sanctified, I want to be set apart, and I want the fullness of God's spirit, and I believe he will give you the spirit without measure. And this happened on the day of Pentecost because he's preaching the word with boldness and with power. But just a few minutes earlier he was talking in tongues people were saying this man is drunk and full of new wine and he said we're not drunk as you suppose but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel that it shall come to pass in the last days saith God that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh your sons and daughters shall prophesy your men will dream dreams and see visions and I will pour out my spirit upon servants and handmaidens shout the Holy Ghost is for everybody. <laughs> you don't need it to go to heaven. You don't need spirit baptism to spend eternity with Christ. But I want to tell you something now. If you're going to go out there and face the devil and do anything for God, you better be equipped with the power and with the endowment with power from on high that only he can give you. <laughs> Repent ye therefore. Be converted that your sin may be blotted out. Why? For when times of refreshing. I want you to underline this in your Bible. Times of refreshing. That means it doesn't happen all the time. You're not always going to be on cloud nine. You're not always going to feel the anointing of the Spirit because He comes upon you for reasons and for seasons. But in order to ever have a spiritual refreshing or a spiritual renewal, you must, number one, repent. Turn to Christ. Have him renew your mind. Become a living sacrifice. Do you realize God cannot send the fire to consume the sacrifice until you become a sacrifice? Until you lay yourself upon the altar. When I give you an invitation to come up here and receive a fresh infilling, every person in this building ought to run up here like you just won the lottery. Now, if I stood up here and I said, I've got a check for a million dollars, first person that gets up here gets it. I bet you wouldn't be standing back there looking at your watch and saying, oh, I got this to do, I got... No, you'd be running up here. But can I tell you what Jesus Christ did for you on Calvary is worth so much more than a million dollars being one second in his presence and in his anointing and in his power is so much more than a million dollars. Times of refreshing. Here's what I believe. Here's what I know that 2021 is going to be the greatest year for this church. I know that. I didn't have this feeling in 2017. I didn't have it in 2018, even when we were tent reviving it. I didn't have it in 2019. I didn't. Had other things on my heart. But now, I know when he speaks to me. I know it. And I know what he said unto me. And that is 2021 will be a year of refreshing for Willing Vessels Christian Center. And I want everybody in this building, I want everyone watching, 
Once we get past this whatever, COVID-19 and election, I'll be so glad when it's over so that we can start doing stuff for the kingdom of God and we won't be so consumed with what's happening in the world and people will come to God's house without fear or worry. I'll be so glad when we can gather together again under the banner of the holiness and power of God for when times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. I love it today. Hallelujah. All right. He said, you'll receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Verse 39 of Acts 2, he said, for the promise is unto you, shout me, to your children, shout my children, and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untwarted generation. Can I tell you that's what I'm declaring unto you today? Save yourself from a dying, grieving, godless generation. That's what we're seeing in the streets of America. That's what we're seeing in the world today. It is a godless society. It's a society that says, I am my own God. It's secular humanism on steroids. It's saying that we came from nothing and and it just happened and we are who we are and that takes away the value of life you see so a man or a woman can go out there and abort a child because it's well it's not a life it's just a, a fetus it's just an organism that's all it is so they lose the value of a life the value of a soul I liked your point when they say well a woman should be able to do what she wants with her body. But last time we talked about it, it took two to tango, didn't it? Huh? How about the man's body that's in that body? See how diabolically the devil makes it about you? About oneself? I got news for you. If you call yourself a Christian, your body's not yours. It doesn't belong to you. (laughs) Because you are bought with a price. And that price is the blood of the spotless Lamb of God. So if you call yourself a Christian, understand this one thing. Your body is not yours, but it is the temple and tabernacle of the Holy Ghost. And I think it's time that we swept our tabernacle and asked the Holy Ghost to give us a fresh infilling, a refreshing that can only come from the presence of God. That's what I want. That's what I desire. Refreshing. Shout, I want it. Raise your hands and begin to praise him. Lord, we magnify you today. Oh, God, be magnified in this place. Hallelujah. Oh, be magnified, Jesus. Lord, you are our supply. You are Elohim. You are Yahweh. <laughs> you are Jehovah Yireh, not Jireh, Yireh, my provider. You are El Shaddai, the almighty, all-sufficient God. You are El Rohi, the God who sees me right where I am. You are Jehovah Shammah, the Lord who is always present. You're Jehovah Shalom, the God who gives peace that passes all understanding. You're Jehovah Rapha, the God that heals all of our diseases. You're Jehovah Sidkenu, my righteousness. You're Jehovah Nisi, my banner. You are my God today. And we magnify you. The God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. (laughs) Uh, The one who told Abraham and told Moses, I am. That I am. Oh, we magnify you today. Repent ye therefore be converted that your sin may be blotted out for when times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Verse 41 of Acts 2, look at this. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. And the same day, the same day, there were added about 3,000 souls. Now, I used to be one of these guys, well, we're not going to worry about numbers. But then I read this one day 
Holy Ghost hit my heart and said, somebody was counting on the day of Pentecost. <laughs> somebody had the clicker that day. But we're counting numbers that count. Amen. Amen. Not just showing up, but I'm talking about people who gladly receive the word, gladly baptized in water, gladly open to the gift of the Holy Ghost and to the gifts of the Spirit. That's the numbers we're counting. But you want to talk about a church growth seminar. I bet Peter was on a roll, buddy. If he was living today, they'd want him to come to every church seminar and say, how did you get 3,000 people in one day? <laughs> and you know what he would say? I don't know. It is a supernatural thing that happens. You can't tie it to a program. You can't tie it to a mailing list. You can't tie it to strong social media. You can't tie it to a strong praise and worship. You can't tie it to a strong preacher. You can't tie it to a nice building. It must be tied to the power of Almighty God. If we want revival and refreshing, we have to ask the God who is sovereign to give it to us and magnify him for it. Go back to chapter 3, verse 20. Verse 20, look at that. And he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you, whom the heaven... Now, I want you to pay attention to verse 20. Is he talking about the second coming? Is he talking about the rapture? Here's what I believe. I believe he was talking about sending Jesus to us in the person of the Holy Ghost. For I am crucified with Christ. Galatians 2.20 Nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. Amen. How does he live in you? The Holy Ghost. Amen. Christ the Holy Ghost. Christ the man is at the right hand of the Father. He's physically there today in the throne room of heaven. And God the Father, the glory of God is in that throne room. But Jesus has sent the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, the third person of the triune Godhead. Number one, to convict us. Secondly, to live in us. Thirdly, to baptize us. And fourthly, to walk with us. So he sends Jesus to you. So I want you to remember something. When you feel like you're all by yourself, when you feel destitute and secluded and lonely and depressed and overwhelmed, I want you to remember the words of this preacher this morning, that God the Father has sent Jesus Christ to this earth so that the disciples could see the Father. But Jesus, when he went to the Father, he sent the Holy Ghost so that we could see Christ. And you have Christ in you and with you 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, because you have Christ the Holy Ghost in you. My God, that's comforting to me. So why would you not want the fullness of his power? Why would you not want the fullness of his glory? Oh, God, help me to preach this this morning. It grieves me when I hear people say that the baptism of the Spirit is at salvation. It grieves me. And they always go to one scripture. 1 Corinthians 12, 13. Well, we're baptized into one body by the Spirit. But listen to something. The Holy Spirit doesn't baptize you Amen. into the Spirit. Jesus baptizes you with the Spirit. <laughs> because John the Baptist said, I baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I'm not worthy to bear. And he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. It's Jesus who is the baptizer in the Holy Ghost. Do you realize that it's all about Jesus Christ? That everything you do, everything you say, he has the preeminence? Go with me quickly. I want to close with this. Ezekiel chapter 47. Now, if you ever want to be entertained, along with being spiritual, read the book of Ezekiel. Because it's, number one, a challenge. And secondly, Ezekiel went through it as a man of God. In fact, when God calls him, he, number one, just like Isaiah, he saw and witnessed the glory of God. 
And he says, all I can say is it looks like a wheel within a wheel. I see these creatures. And, and he saw the glory of God. He saw the glory of God being lifted from the temple of God. He saw destruction and judgment coming. God told him to actively act out some of the prophecies. Some of those meant, meant he had to take his clothes off. Uh, Ezekiel had a hard time being a man of God, as did Isaiah and Jeremiah and many of those, who, <laughs> the disciples. If you want to be a man or woman of God, I can tell you now, expect tribulation, expect persecution, but you can also expect joy in the midst of it all. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Ezekiel 47, we have various opinions about. He describes, in the latter part of the book, he describes a temple. And many believe this will be a temple during the millennial kingdom. Many believe it's a temple possibly in the new heaven and new earth. And he actually talks about sacrifices being made. And some scholars ask, well, why? Christ has paid for the sin of the world. Now, and then, of course, they say it's just in remembrance, sort of how we do communion. Some believe that this is literal like that. Some believe this is spiritual or figurative, talking about salvation, Christ, his finished work, and then the Holy Spirit. I believe they're both right. I don't believe it's either or. I believe it's both an and. Uh, I believe that there will be a temple. I believe we will remember the sacrifice for all eternity. But I also believe this is talking about, just as Jesus referred to it, as a spiritual experience of salvation. The finished work of Christ and the outpouring of the Spirit. Because Jesus stood in the last day, the great day of the feast, in John chapter 7, verse 38, and he said, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. For he that believeth on me, as the Scripture saith, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. And then in Acts twenty two seventeen, he said, The Spirit and the bride say, Come, let him that heareth come. Whosoever will, let him come and take of the water of life freely. So we have a figurative picture of Genesis where there were rivers going into the Garden of Eden and how it was cursed with the sin of Adam. And then in Re Revelation, you have him culminating the whole thing, bringing everything back in order with a river of life. But all of that starts right now with our experience with Christ. And we can experience a foreshadowing of what we will have in eternity. That's why he heals people today. Number one, to show his glory, show his power, to be a witness for someone. Secondly, to show you what's to come, to give you a glimpse. Now, you're still going to die. You're still going to get sick. But you have a picture when God heals your body on this earth of what it's going to be like for all eternity. It's a foreshadowing. When you feel his anointing and you feel his presence like I feel him this morning, that's just a foretaste of what it will be like in eternity with him all the days of our lives. Can you imagine having this euphoric type feeling all the time? We couldn't handle it in our body now. Oh, but then. But I'm thankful for the times of refreshing. But I want to read this passage quickly. Uh, Ezekiel 47 verse 1. Afterward he brought me again unto the door of the house. And behold, waters issued out from under the threshold of the house eastward. For the forefront of the house stood toward the east, and the waters came down from under, from the right side of the house, at the south side of the altar. Then brought he me out of the way of the gate northward, and led me about the way without unto the utter gate. By the way that looketh eastward, and behold, there ran out waters on the right side. And when the man that had me line, or had the line in the, his hand, went forth eastward, he measured a thousand cubits, and he brought me through the waters. Now, the basic thing I want you to get in this passage is the waters. And the waters were to the ankles. If you think about this experience, okay? When you come to Jesus Christ, when if you're watching and you give your heart to Jesus, you give your life to him today, you're getting ankle deep right there. Do you realize that? You're getting ankle deep. You're feeling his presence. You're feeling the conviction of the Spirit, the tugging of the Holy Spirit. The problem is so many people stay there. Again, he measured a thousand and brought me through the waters, and the waters were to the knees. 
How many remember the day that you had just a strong unction to give your whole life to Christ? Not because you wanted to be saved, you were already saved, but you wanted something more, something deeper. You wanted to go further, higher, and deeper than you've ever been. Well, that's knee deep. You ready? Again, he measured a thousand and brought me through, and the waters were to the loins, the waist. Here we go. Afterward, he measured a thousand, and it was a river that I could not pass over, for the waters were risen, waters to swim in a river that could not be passed over. And he said unto me, Son of man, hast thou seen this? And the answer is, no, he has not. Because I, Ezekiel, like you and I, did not, were, was not able to look back at Calvary and the finished work of Christ. He was not able to read the book of Acts and say, I want that. But he was looking to the cross. But God in his glory was giving him a vision not only of something in the future beyond our future, but he was also giving him a glimpse of what it was like to be a Christian. And that's why Jesus stood and said what he said. If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. For out of his belly shall flow what? Rivers of living water. Rivers, plural. Folks, the Holy Ghost is that river. There is a river that makes glad the city of God. But when you come to Christ, you get ankle deep. You go a little further in your relationship, you get knee deep. You go a little bit further, it gets up to your waist. But I'm telling you that you can get to a place where you can't even swim in this thing. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Into the presence and into the glory of Almighty God. And it doesn't stop with a baptism in the Spirit. It continues on as you Amen. continually give your life to Christ. Amen. And repent. Amen. And refreshing. Yeah. And restoration. 